I'm going to now defend some capitalistic practices, or what he, he, you wouldn't describe them as capitalistic, but let's talk about Moderna. I, I like talking about Moderna. So Gene says that the government officials were bribed by Moderna. Let's think about what really happened here. Moderna is a greedy company. They don't like to give out credit. They don't like to give out money. Scientists for the government made crucial discoveries that helped lead to the vaccine and then basically had to sue Moderna to get the credit and get some royalties. That doesn't sound like bribery to me. That sounds like, you know, somebody saying, I deserve some credit and I should get some money. And if I have to sue to do it, I'll sue. Secondly, the, whatever you think about vaccines, their creation was, I mean, there's so much, there is a lot of crony capitalism around. But, but when you think about the vaccines, you know, you're in this, the, the government was in this situation where they said, we, we need to do this quickly. We need to do this faster than anybody has ever done this in history. And so we're going to have a competition. We're going to give money to, you know, eight different companies or, or joint ventures. And we're going to see which one of them can come up with a vaccine first. And the ones that come up with a vaccine first, we will help fund to, to, to distribute them. They went so far as to help Moderna build manufacturing plants. Now, to me, that's a good thing. If you're in an emergency and you're trying to come up with an emergency medicine, this is what you want. And, uh, and they did come up with it. And it, I mean, they oversold the hell out of it, which is really terrible. Um, oh, oh, boy, oh. Um, they oversold, but this whole, there's other business, government, sh so this, this thing about government shielded by loss from government, right, excuse me, uh, I'm sorry, hold on. The government shielding the companies from loss. Let's talk about that for a second. See, the problem, the problem with Gene is he thinks about capitalism as it should be, in its purest form, the way Milton Friedman would want it, the way Adam Smith would want it. I'm talking about capitalism as it actually works in the real world. So why did... Pfizer and all these other companies want to be shielded from loss for vaccines. The answer is because they had come up with a vaccine for Ebola, thinking that would be a huge thing. It wasn't. So anybody who made a vaccine lost a lot of money. Same thing for various other, um, uh, excuse me, uh, influenza uh, viruses. Uh, they came and they went, and they were no big deal, and vaccine makers lost money. So. Vaccine makers basically said, I don't know whether this is going to be a big deal or not. If I'm going to get into this, if I'm going to spend billions of my own money, <coughs> I, need some, I need some guarantee. I need to know that it's not going to cost me billions of dollars. Otherwise, I won't do it. That's how capitalism, that's how it works in the real world. You know, that's how it works. Because they want to make money. And so, to me, sh being shielded from loss by the government was not a bad thing. It was a good thing. The bad thing, as long as we're talking about vaccines, is that when they became available, Fauci and everybody else oversold the hell out of it. They should have said, we don't know whether it transmits or not, because they hadn't tested for that. That was not part of the phase two, phase three testing. They hadn't tested for it. What they should have said was, it will reduce death and disease, death and illness. And that's what it did. It reduced death and illness. But it didn't reduce transmission. Everybody got transmission when, uh, um, what was the name of that one that came after Delta? Um, Omicron. After, when Omicron. Everybody got it. I got it. I didn't even know I had it. Um, I agree with Gene that, what, what did you call it, crappy, what do you call it? There's a lot of capitalism around. I, uh, yeah, sure, okay, fine. There is. 
my point was th that is the kind of capitalism that causes problems. The purity of his capitalism doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, at least not in the United States. So to say that that kind of capitalism was a net plus for, for COVID or didn't have any effect on COVID is silly because, did I say this before? It doesn't exist. And I think I've got another minute or so, but you know, I don't really need another minute or so because I think, I think I've made my point. Thank you, Joe. Gene, you have 7.5 minutes for your rebuttal. Please take the podium, Gene. Well, uh, you, you're speaking uh, to the utopian Gene Epstein, uh, and uh, I, I only want to remind Joe that, as I said, there really is a lot of capitalism in the U.S. It is a very common error to define capitalism as a system of profit. Uh, a, Look all around you, companies go bankrupt all the time. Most startups uh, fail after a few years. Uh, the companies that were dominant 20 years ago, uh, many of them are now non-existent or on their knees. And so really, I'm not asking for utopia. I'm only asking for the system of profit and loss with which many companies in this country do have to cope by and large, and uh, therefore, I would want to ask Joe that uh, when Rand Paul said the same people who got royalties were dictating policy, or when Joe says that Fauci, the scientist, or Rochelle Walensky, were claiming that the vaccines did what was that vaccines were supposed to do, protect you against infection, and they did this without any basis whatsoever in science. Joe isn't appalled the way I am uh, 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 because he's very tolerant of crony capitalism. Clearly, Fauci, when asked a number of times by Rand Paul, uh, do you get money from these companies, he fumfed. He said, oh, I don't think so. Uh, he, clearly he does, clearly he profits. This is the corruption of crony capitalism and it is appalling appalling that, that a sophisticated scientist can make a claim about a vaccine for which there is absolutely no basis whatsoever, that Rochelle Walensky can make the same claim, that, that that's when we had the appalling manifestations of crony capitalism, the thing that Joe doesn't seem to like. But I want to remind him again that we do have profit and loss in this system, and we could have had it in this case. Uh, uh, Joe, Joe seems to have implied earlier that it was too bad that people resisted the mandates. Well, again, Joe, if the vaccine uh, did what, it's, what you claim it did, and I said, I don't want to get bogged down in that, how do governments mandate its use? And the reason why they did it, obviously, is that by and large, they were tools of crony capitalism. So the ugliness of crony capitalism became manifest. And now, of course, Joe has completely ducked, I guess, my more subtle point, because I guess I sound like a radical libertarian when I talk about the Federal Reserve, but I want to stipulate again, because I don't want to push us to the edge of radicalism this evening, I only want to say that it's possible to have a Federal Reserve, a central bank, without, without six trillion or nearly six trillion dollars in deficits being financed by this institution that Joe himself condemns, that clearly is a is an also an instrument of crony capitalism. So that's the point. That's what we've got. But I want to remind Joe that I'm not a starry-eyed utopian. I'm not asking for the libertarian revolution to happen tomorrow. I'm only asking that uh, that that we uh, that had we had an economy that behaves like much of the economy in this country does behave, a, a system of profit and loss where, 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 where responsible capitalists do have to act prudently, where they do get punished if they, uh, if they misallocate capital. I only want to say that had we had that system applying to the dominant levers uh, that government uh, exercised, 
during the pandemic, we would have had a much better result.